As an artist, I tend to see an artifact as an extension of my own being, part of my body, my anatomy. You know, what Richard Dawkins called the extended phenotype of an organism. So I want to put forward an idea that I just recently picked up from William Irwin Thompson, which is the likely movement into an emphasis on the ego in service of a greater collaboration. I think we'll start to see multimodal, hypertextual, synesthetic works. Whereas before, the book was the work of art. Now it is the book and the movie and the website and the action figures and all the fan fiction and all the blogging about it. That we have to, in a sense, expand our definition of the actual artifact itself to include all of those critical perspectives, all of those variations, the way that the entire community is creating an artifact in conscious or unconscious collaboration. In ancient China, you got layer after layer after layer of commentary on texts like the I Ching or the Art of War. And no Chinese person would even consider reading the text without the commentary. It would be an amputation. There are ways that we can draw a line for the sake of convenience but it's understood as arbitrary, and so really once you get going, there's no place where it becomes immediately obvious that you should stop and say the art ends here. All right, well, this work of art includes my critics and the gallery and the experience of the opening at that gallery that I want to bring people into and the whole culture around it, you know. But it keeps going, and suddenly the way that I communicate to my family the way that I relate to my own body becomes a part of that artwork and suddenly every little artifact that I've created is actually part of the corpus, the entire work of art. It becomes all or nothing. Everything I do, everything I am, everything that's going on at all is art. And it's not really, because there's nothing new under the sun. Retrocausality has been demonstrated in three different laboratories, so it's not like we can actually make something new that we can say is not informed by the future. So in a sense, there's no real way to be creative. There's no real way to be original. There's no real way to express something new. And yet, then there's this other thing, which is that it's all new. It's all unique. It's all happening. Frank Zappa has this quote that writing about music is like dancing about architecture. These cultures and these traditions are inherently incommensurable, that in some way each of them is an encapsulated world space, that whatever is native to each is lost in translation. But when I look at that statement, what I see is that people do write about music very eloquently, and their writing, because these people are already thinking about music, takes on a consciously musical quality, becomes a form of music. Likewise, you can dance about architecture in the same way, because you are creating, through your movement, a physical space for people to inhabit. Part of what we're already witnessing and what we're going to continue to witness is a kind of self-conscious re-establishment of relationship to specific media and specific genres as the genres themselves are constructed. Why is it that I call this music instead of architecture, or architecture instead of music? It's almost a matter of personal disposition and preference. So. Personally, as a musician, I love the architectural metaphor for what I do. I love to think about creating a space for people to inhabit, to make the concert a temple, to extend that metaphor in every possible way, up to that whole union thing where the dream house is your own mind, and actually, you know, that we have this very intimate relationship with the context that is expressing itself.